Good morning and welcome to this service of prayer during the day for Sunday the 11th of October. In church, it's a first for us, we are marking harvest but in the coronavirus season and for us that means having to quarantine the donations of non-perishable goods and being very careful about how we deliver them to the vineyard uh, food bank uh, in Richmond. But we'll make it happen. So let us pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, my God, in you I trust. So our song of praise, our words of praise, are continue from last week. We started with the Canticle of the Sun uh, from St Francis. So we are working our way through it. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister moon and the stars. In heaven you have formed them clear and precious and beautiful. Blessed be you, my Lord, through brother wind and through the air cloudy and serene and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praised be you, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you light the night and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praised be you, my Lord, through sister Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us, and who brings various fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. So that seemed a good place to stop as we think of harvest and the fruitfulness of the earth. And that theme is continued through our first reading from Leviticus, about tending the land. And that's something that I, we've been thinking of, how we tread gently on the earth, how we care for the earth through our actions and how we live our lives in Teddington today. So Leviticus 25. The Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land that I am giving you, the land shall observe a Sabbath of the Lord. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in their yield. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of complete rest for the land. A Sabbath for the Lord. You shall not sow your field, nor prune your vineyard. You shall not reap the afterglow, aftergrowth of the harvest or gather the grapes of your unpruned vine. It shall be a year of complete rest for the land. You may eat what the land yields during the Sabbath, you, your male and female slaves, your hired and your bound labourers who live with you, for your livestock also and also for the wild animals in your land, all its yield shall be for food. So from thousands of years ago, land management. Our gospel reading is taken from John 6. And as we hear this, it's a very, very familiar reading perhaps thinking about how we share the world's resources, what we can do at a small level, what we can do on a large level, what we can do. So John 6. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. 
When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew him, for he knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as many as they wanted. As mu uh, When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, he filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed is the prophet who is come into the world. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So let's just spend a few moments reflecting on that reading. Whether it's to wonder at Jesus and the miracle of five loaves and two fishes. Oh, here comes a cat. Whether it is to think about what we can do to share the resources of the world. Or whether it's to think about are we like that crowd who want to force Jesus to be something that we want, force him to be king and not ruler of our hearts. That's clear. Shh, you're meant to be responding in silence. So let us pray. At this time of harvest, we give you thanks for the harvest, for the food that we eat. We give you thanks for the farmers who are working so hard in complex conditions, more so this year. We give you thanks for those who transport, who pick and who then transport our food, for those who process it, for those who sell it. And at this time, when we are acutely aware of all of those people that are in our food chain, we give you thanks for those who work in supermarkets, all of those who help us get food on our table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, uh, both national and local, as they work out how, oh, cat here, um, as they work out through all the conflicting advice and all the conflicting priorities, what we as a country can do to limit the spread of coronavirus. We pray that in all of their deliberations, they put those who are the most vulnerable first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are working in our National Health Service, uh, in our clinics, in our GP surgeries, as they gear up for winter. Lord, give them wisdom and compassion strength and knowing when they need to switch off so that they may have Sabbath rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are sick, for those who are worried about operations that have been put back. We pray for those who have died. At this time, we remember Joan Lego and Frank Hurst, whose funerals were in this past week. Be with their families as they mourn the loss of those who are much loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, for those concerns on our hearts. And we pray that we may find a way to tread lightly on this earth and work to heal the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks for our companion animals, for the animals that have kept us company during lockdown, for those that help with stress, for those who are companions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer in whichever language or version you are most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our blessing is a blessing for the earth. Tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. So God bless and see you next week.